This is Hartford Whaler Nation. Welcome to Whaler Nation TV. Uh, last show, uh, Pete, we had uh, we had Greg Gilmartin, uh, a blast from the past, uh, PA mm -hmm. uh, announcer for the Hartford Whalers for many years, That's right. uh, and now uh, doing some uh, studio work on, in his own studios down mm -hmm. in Mystic, yeah. uh, doing commercials and, and other shoots. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fun having him on. Yeah, I think that we will definitely uh, get in touch with him again because, uh, as you saw as we talked to him, he said, "Don't mention any dates," you know, because he wasn't <laughs> sure if he could remember exactly when things happened, and he said, "Don't worry about it." And uh, as we started to jog his memory a little bit, he started to remember things and told great stuff about behind the scenes things that, you know, he said that, you know, Gretzky, uh, you know, didn't think he belonged in the penalty box when he was put in there. He said he learned all kinds of, uh, you know, words and uh, different languages and, uh, you know, some of the colorful ones, you know. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so he had a lifetime of that. And then, you know, the real kicker was the one thing that he changed in the final game, you know, he remained pretty professional. He didn't really change much. He just changed one word. Mm -hmm. And the, the word is, we always used to hear, uh, here are your Hartford Whalers. Uh, for the final time they came on the ice, he said, here are the Hartford Whalers. And he wanted to signify that these are the Hartford Whalers. They're not ours anymore. They're not anymore. ours anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, Sad day. But they still, they still do exist in Carolina, but that's not exactly... You know, no, not it's not exactly all. whaler friendly, but yeah, a little, yeah. A little whaler uh, news that was out today was uh, Randy Latissor, uh, number 29, our defenseman for many right. years, captain uh, of the whalers, yeah, yep, captain for a short period of time, yeah. is now uh, assistant coach with Lake Erie of the AHL, of the AHL, yeah, which is the Colorado Avalanche's right, right. Uh, farm club. Right. So it's right. a good another yeah. another whaler becoming yeah, another a coach whaler. of sorts. Uh, you know, Dean Emerson is the I believe he's the head coach in uh, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we talked about it, but Alf Samuelson got a uh, assistant coaching job with the Rangers. Yes. So he'll be uh, behind the bench in New York. Well, he made he made a good uh, um, debut here when he was with the Wolfpack right. as the assistant coach. Right, right. Uh, and I think a lot of people like that. You know, yeah. having him in the area. He was always a very friendly guy. Uh, right. Fun right. to be around. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's quite a character. Oh yeah, he is. Uh, uh, you know, he wasn't exactly here for that long in his career, but he was here long enough that he's is he memorable. He made an impact. Uh, yeah, you could say that, honestly, he's probably one of the most famous Whaler defensemen, if not the most famous, you know. Sure. I mean, Mark Howe, you can make an argument there, but Mark mm -hmm. didn't play uh, you know, oh, you as much everyone. as Alf did. Yeah, you, you uh, go through a list of them. You had yeah. Risto Silton, and yeah. you had uh, Jeff Brown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the, you it, go Glenn it, Wesley was a, you know, was a big deal. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and he was a he was another yeah. fine gentleman of the game. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. right, yeah. right, he, right. He, he didn't get, he, he would stick up for the guys, but he wasn't one to really scrap a lot. Right, right, He yeah. would get into them. He was a, you know, solid defenseman, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we were we were talking recently. Also, uh, in the news in the NHL was uh, they had the inductions for the Hall of Fame recently, mm -hmm. yep. and uh, Brendan Shanahan had uh, been elected to the Hall of Fame. And uh, you know, looking through social media and Twitter, mm -hmm. um, you know, the response in Hartford is pretty much anti-Shanahan. Uh, I had made the argument, and let me see if you agree, mm -hmm. um, that, that Shanahan is probably the most hated whaler of all time because of the, of the reason that he, over the summer of it was 96, 95, 96. Mm -hmm. Uh, 96, the final season that the Whalers yep. were here, uh, he had made it clear that he wanted out. Uh, and it, it's, it's believed by me that he, he just didn't want to deal with the team moving. He was 27. He had just came from St. Louis. Uh, he actually liked being in St. Louis. I think he wanted to be uh, part of a team that was going to stay somewhere. And not. But if you notice the players that were coming to Hartford, uh, like Paul Coffey came over in the deal, yep, yep. They, they didn't really want to deal with Hartford in the move. So Shanahan you know, gave that impression that you know, he wanted to be traded or moved. Uh, you know, he ended up getting traded for Keith Primo, Paul Coffey, and uh, I think there was another guy in the deal. I can't yeah, remember. There was one more. I don't remember. Anyway, but he ended up going to Detroit mm -hmm. um, and, you know, going on to have a pretty good Hall of Fame career. Um, but is Shanahan, the question is, is Shanahan really a bad guy in Hartford? Was he really a bad well, player? I, you have to look at it. I mean, when, when the team was for sale, there was a lot of emotion whether it was the fans, whether it was the players. We really didn't know what was going through unless it was the core group of players that was always, they were always in the media, uh, given their, their little blurbs that they would give. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on all of them. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I've never met Shanahan. 
Uh, I didn't like his attitude here. Right. Um, but again, you know, being put in that position, how would you feel? Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sticking up for the guy. I'm trying to be as, you know, objective as possible. Right. But, you know, coming to, and again, Hartford's not Edmonton, who's won Stanley Cups in Boston. But, again, we always go back to this, and it's the truth about all of our players that were here for the most part. Mm. Community-based. They always involved the fans. Shanahan didn't come off that way. And from, I guess, that aspect, I didn't like him for that. It, it kind of a nose in the air, you know, better than everybody. Right. Um, yeah. Is he, was he a good player? Yeah, he was a good player. Yeah, His statistics right. show it. Right. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what you always measure uh, players by. Right. You know, you want to have a personality behind it and right. not, not right. shun your fans. You want them to come and see you and spend money to pay for your contract. Right, right. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm kind of in the middle on that right. one. Right, right. Do I think he's Hall of Fame? Eh. Yeah. Eh. Eh. Well, I'd have to know, see the he statistics. Was at, you know. at the time, though, at the time in the in the mid '90s when he when he was on the Whalers for that yep. short period of time, mm -hmm. uh, I'll give him credit for this because most people just don't like him. But mm -hmm. I mean, he played to the last minute. He played minute. hard. He, he played hard. hard. As a matter of fact, in the final game he played, which was uh, in October of that year, he mm -hmm. played the Penguins mm -hmm. and they won seven three. Uh, he scored a goal in that, uh, and, and it's on uh, YouTube if, okay. if, if anybody wants to go look at it. But uh, he scores this goal as he comes across the net and beats Tom Barrasso. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, they booed the heck out of him all night, but on that goal they were cheering well, for him. You know, well, I mean, you know, and, and, he really did try his hardest. You know, he really well, did. Well, I think, I think when you look at a player like that, he knows, and work ethic, it goes right. back to that. He knows he has to hold up his end of the deal, and, yeah. and I, th I don't see him not being that guy. Yeah. You know, he played hard. Um, just like any other player, yeah. Uh, going on the ice, some days you have good days, bad days, whatever. Right. Uh, he always was a hustler. And, yeah. And, you know, I give him credit for that. Uh, Absolutely. He didn't like us, <laughs> and, but but you got that perception of him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a guy who worked in DMV, and when he went to go to get his license, he goes, he was a jerk. <laughs> you know, and you yeah. know, he was trying to make small talk with him, but right. he just. Wasn't no, it like, wasn't there. No. no. Uh, and, and if you remember, uh, there was a there was a famous uh, the guy in the diaper. Mm -hmm. When Detroit came back after Shannon was traded to Detroit, he, like, he came back to play Hartford. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy, it was a guy who showed up, had a, uh, I think he had a bonnet and a rattle <laughs> and a diaper. And, and that was like it. That was how the guy was all done up. I mean, people gave him a hard time saying that, you know, he was, he was acting like the baby. But yeah. he, it was a great Look outfit. At a point, yeah. Yeah, and, and the diaper was full. <laughs> it looked like the diaper was full, too, I'm just going to say. Well, you know, but, I mean, uh, had some know, medical condition <laughs> we didn't know about. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, you yeah. know, I think over the years when you look at the the players and now Shanahan obviously is working for the NHL and right. you know is in a very a difficult position. Discipl yeah, disciplinarian. Uh, well, disciplinarian yeah. and the, and the league has changed so much. Right. Uh, when it comes into trying to protect the players and yeah, there's a couple players out there that are just thugs and they're gonna do. It. I mean, you know, uh, the guy for um, the Penguins, uh, oh, okay. who, who is a cook. Uh, oh, okay. Who, you know, he's always. You know, is he is his job to get under people's skin? Yeah. But he takes it to the next level. Right. I mean, how many times has people been uh, sent out? I mean, what was it, Horton? When Horton got yeah. hammered by him, you know, uh, you know, you, you look at this, and this is this is the type of guy this guy is. Now he's on the radar because he's been suspended two or three times because right. of these these oh, illegal yeah. hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It was it was an interesting time here with Shanahan. It was uh, I think I think I'm, I got my stats right here. He played I think he played 76 games with the Whalers mm -hmm. and 79 points. I mean, it was pretty good. Right. And, you know, if you remember, you traded Chris Pronger for him. Mm -hmm. you, you could have held on to Chris Pronger. I mean, I did, I hindsight mean, is a little uh, easy to look it, at it exactly. now. Uh, you know, you could have kept Chris Pronger, but at the time they felt like he was too immature and they didn't want to. But look wanna, what Primo did. Yeah. Primo was a great player. And, he was. Uh, you know, if, if the, great personality. If Paul Coffey had at least applied himself. Now, when you say most hated Whaler, you, you could probably pick between Shanahan and Coffey, I think. Right. Uh, and, most and, people and, don't like Coffey because he was – Downright uh, rude. Yeah, <laughs> that would be. He downright the word. did not want to be here, and I think I remember reading in the current at the time, mm -hmm. and this is 1996. But mm -hmm. uh, that Deneen had come forward to the to the general manager, to Jim Rutherford, and said, "We got to get Paul Coffey out of here." He's, I think it was the word was cancer in the locker room, <laughs> right, said, right? Because uh, you know Paul Coffey just did not want to be in Hartford. Right. He had probably had the same feelings that Shanahan did. Yeah. And I understand that if you're if 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 we got started working in sure. Uh, you know, any place, someplace yeah. far away, and we didn't want to be there, you know, they, they're just putting up their stink, I right, guess. Exactly. But, uh, no, but 
what are you going to do? It's it's water under the bridge now. It is, and, and, uh, and you know, I, yeah. like you said, hindsight is is always twenty twenty. Yeah. And, and you know, when we had, but the group of players and Randy Lattiser being one of them, you know, yeah. uh, a classy guy, and I'm very happy for him. You know, yeah. he did a stint with Montreal as a assistant coach, mm -hmm. uh, Hamilton, uh, the Montreal's farm club. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think it was Oshawa of the OHL. Yeah. You know, so you know he he uh, he's been around, and it's nice that he has an opportunity to be assistant coach. And hopefully, I'd like to see him as a, a assistant up in the uh, NHL again. That would be nice. That would be really well, nice. Well, the resume is yeah. big, as we as we talked well, about. Well, yeah, you know? I mean, you know about the coaching tree and how many Whaler coaches uh, that are currently are sure. were Whalers and now coaches mm -hmm. in the NHL, AHL, and other uh, you know small leagues. Sure. Uh, you know, it's bound to, we're going to see some more. Uh, we've got what three uh, guys that were Whalers that are coaches now with Dean yep. Tippett and. Quinville, um, yep. so you know they're all there. The, you know what I want to throw at you? Know, I want to throw you another scenario here. What's that? And this is going back again to 1995, and uh, I don't know if I even remember this at the time. And uh, if you can think about it, think about it at the time. And this mm -hmm. is 1995. Mm -hmm. There was uh, a little bit of talk between the Penguins and Hartford about bringing Ron Francis back to Hartford in '95. Uh, and the Penguins were inquiring about Andrew Castles, mm -hmm. Mark Jansons, mm -hmm. and Merrick Malik, who was 20 oh, I, at the time. Yep, I remember that. And who was thought to be this huge prospect at the time. That you turned know? out to be. Yeah, he turned out didn't to be. Because yeah. didn't he play with the Rangers towards the end of his he career? Did he did play played with the Rangers. And the Wolfpack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, he, he bounced back and forth. He kind of went to a, yeah, a couple other teams uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, didn't amount to a whole lot of points right. in the NHL. Um, but at the time, at the time, would you make that deal knowing that Ron Francis is aging, uh, ending the, you know, kind of, and when you think about it at the time, the 95 Whalers, if you took Castles, Jansons, and Malik, uh, that was kind of their, their core. There was That's two centers and yeah. a defenseman. Yep. Uh, you know, that would have been a lot to get a, uh, you know, Ron Francis, who at the time was, you know, getting up there in age. Uh, but again, but, you look at the work ethic, and Ron Francis never, right. never let us down. Whatever, yeah. whatever <clears throat> um, year it was, whatever team we had, uh, and I mean that, Truthfully, right. you know, some sometimes this this team that got on the ice, it was just we didn't have the team, the chemistry. Right. Um, fortunately, we had the crew of the '87. You know, uh, Everson, Gavin, uh, Lawless, uh, and back then, it just it, everything clicked perfectly, and it yeah. was a great chemistry. And again, you look at the type of personalities; they all got along great. Yeah, they did. Uh, but they you're did. right. You take out three players that were significant. Where yeah. we where would we be right. with a last place Ron Francis or a first place Ron Francis? <laughs> yeah, we would because yeah. I mean I, you know you're not going to tell me uh, you know that Jansen's was a big uh, goal scorer, a big producer, but uh, you know he's a good uh, two way centerman in a way where he could he could definitely check and he could well, play I think, defense. I think, I think he, when you, you know, look at social media, that might be a question we put out there. You know what? There might be because uh, I, I you know to me if I'm going to lay myself on the tracks, at the time. I, I would not make the deal. I would think that the Francis being aging, uh, Castles, you know, ha had a, over 700 points oh, in yeah. a thousand games, so he was no uh, uh, no you know. slouch. Yeah, he, he was, was no, no slouch. No. He had and, a lot of points. And Castles, as yeah. well as Sanderson, right? Great hustlers. Sure. Uh, again, uh, that Deneen-esque right. uh, spark plug. Right. You know, on the, yes. on, the, on their yes. lines. Yes. Um, uh, but Ka and, and Malik being 20, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to think that at the time I was thinking maybe he would develop into something. Sure. But now looking at the trade, they should have pulled the trigger on that. Should have done that. They should have done yeah, that in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah because yeah. Jansen's uh, and and Malik, you know, didn't really amount too too much into the no. NHL in terms of scoring or anything. But Francis, you know, was a playmaker. And uh, well, if you remember, we we lost that playmaker when he left. You mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, that's why he was. Was Jansen's a fourth liner with a checking uh, line? You know, what? I. I I can't remember exactly what line yeah. he used to play on, but he definitely was a more physical player. If you remember, he was yeah. a bruiser too. He yeah, get, it reminds mix me it of like, like yeah. a Sean, Sean Thornton today. Yeah, you right, know, that right, type right. of that type, and I think yeah. he was 22, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, he was. yeah. But he was also he was a good leader though too. He was a good yeah. leader. Yeah, Jansen's no, was. So, yeah, and, and a that's years, when yeah. you look at veteran leadership in um, right. in the locker room. Yeah, I right. mean, you saw it when the Bruins, not that I liked it, brought Yager in. Right. That was, they were going with the veteran leadership to get these people into, right. you know, the playoffs. And, they almost and uh, pulled that off, yeah. They did. And, yeah. you know, and now, and now it's been a firestorm, a fire sale in Boston, and yeah. everyone's going because of the contracts and everything else. They shored up right. some very big names, and that was the other thing. You brought up uh, uh, Kevin Deneen. Kevin Deneen has a new employee today as uh, Scott Gomez was signed for a one-year oh, deal. That's right, yeah. What was it, 900000 900000 yep. I think he, he wasn't he with the Devils uh, yeah. for a long time. And, yep, and then uh, Montreal, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think so. so yeah. he's, but he's, uh, he's more towards the end of his career. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was some other... Um, 
So you just brought up another point that I was going to mention. But anyway, that's going to help him a lot sure. in Florida. Uh, you know, the Panthers are, uh, I hate to say it, but this might be Deneen's year where he has to kind of uh, make a move. Make it or break uh, it. Yeah, he had, a, had yeah. a bad year. It was a, it was a, um, a lockout year. It was, you know, kind of tough to blame him, but uh, this will be year three. Uh, they made the playoffs the first year. They didn't get out of the first round. If you remember, they lost to New Jersey in seven games. I don't mm. think it was a double overtime game, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that was great for them, but they, they unfortunately need to build on that. So be an interesting year for Kevin Deneen down in Florida to see if he uh, can get the, his team and, and get enough talent, really, because yeah. uh, Florida lost a couple players, too. Yeah, they did. Uh, so, you know, and it'll then, be interesting to see how he does Looking at that. Joel Quenville, you know, I, I haven't seen uh, recently any of the, uh, the train – trade moves no. uh, with Chicago no. specifically or any of the contracts. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a lull right now. Right. Uh, baseball has all the attention and wondering if uh, Rodriguez is going to find <laughs> another profession. Um, uh, yeah, probably. But um, I certainly hope so. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, the, the, if, in fact, we get a whole season in next year, which we will, of course, yes. um, it'll be nice to see a full season of hockey and really let these guys uh, do what they do best and play great hockey. Right, right. So. Yeah, a, a full season is, is definitely due. I mean, there, I can't remember how many lockouts. It feels like we've had uh, over the last, you know, 12, 15 years, we've had uh, quite a few. Well, yeah. uh, more than you need to have. I mean, you know. Well, you know, it, 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 I think it goes back to the leadership. And, you know, and, um, everyone is very critical of the commissioner. Right. Uh, and why is he having all these lockouts? You know, mm -hmm. it goes back to how you're managing your league. Right. Um, the other sports aren't doing this, right, and, uh, right. and we, we have to remember hockey has the smallest fan base, yeah. and uh, you know when you get out of the four sports, yeah. we need all the fans we can get. And right. you know when you irritate the fans, you know season tickets are a luxury. Yeah, they I are. mean for me they are. Yeah, I, you they know are. if you have money, good for you. Yeah, but uh, you know. I have a kid going to college, kids getting married. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm yeah. not having season tickets for no, a long time. No, that's how it'll Even work. on the AHL yeah. level. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's how it would work in Hartford if, uh, if, the, if Hartford's ever w awarded a, and a team. Uh, this would be the type of city where people will go to 5, 10 games, not necessarily go to 40 a lot. Right. Or, uh, you know, but there's so many people in the area to support a team that that's why I think it's, it's different. Small markets work different mm -hmm. than other markets. Uh, you know, um, a good case would be like M Milwaukee. Uh, you know, we talk about Green Bay and how mm -hmm. the fans there support, uh, you know, privately. Uh, I think we have to yeah. send uh, Commissioner Bettman mm. a letter mm -hmm. and see what the answer is. Uh, see if, yeah. if there was a possibility of the people of Hartford Mm -hmm. Or Connecticut, obviously right. it's Connecticut. Uh, buying stock in a hockey club mm. is that something that's feasible, mm. or is that only done on the right. NFL level, like it was Green Bay? Right. Because we've brought it up many times, and Howard Baldwin was on here, and and he liked the idea. And yeah. uh, you know, if you think about it, it's a it's a team that's owned by the people. Right. Uh, I mean, if you if you take stock and change, exchange it for hats and T-shirts and jerseys. Uh, it sounds like a lot of people would buy stock because I mean, look, uh, look how many people are buying merchandise oh, still yeah. for a team that doesn't uh, exist. Yeah, like uh, top ten. what's his name yeah. over uh, John uh, Hodgman yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I bought a t I it's, have a T-shirt. It's a fictional hockey team. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they still sell the shirts. Yeah, right. You know, Bradley Airport. Yeah. And they sell lots of them. Yes, they do. Uh, we're going to have Ehor Selmak. Uh, who runs Parade and Novelties coming on our show yeah. um, at the end of the month. Right. And uh, he still, to this day, he says, my store survives primarily on Whaler stuff yeah. and Red Sox and Yankees, of course. Oh, sure. And he says, but the Whaler stuff is right up there. I cannot yeah. keep it on the shelves. The one amazing stat about that is when he was on uh, the Versus piece, mm -hmm. and he said his Whaler uh, merchandise outsells NFL, MLB, NBA, yep, uh, and uh, I think there was another part. Yeah, of there, there was some other. Yeah, part, but yeah. I mean, it, I mean, just the Whalers outsell all the other NHL included. Yep, all the other NHL teams, yep. MLB, NBA, NFL. I mean, that's just. And I understand we're in we're close to Hartford, but still, sure, still. Well, I mean, you look you know? at the NHL store. There was a, a clip on Facebook of uh, a motorcycle inside the lobby, and the guy, the mannequin on the, the, the motorcycle has a Whalers jersey on. Yeah, front, front and, and center. And, you know, when you look at, you know, this is the NHL store. They're selling Whalers merchandise, mm. and it's almost, and, and again, I get very critical of uh, the state leadership as well as the, the local leadership. How come everyone else out there wants the Whalers back except the people the leadership within our state. Right. I have a very difficult time with this. It, it, you know, we live in Connecticut. It doesn't mean we have to keep our eyes shut to what's just in Connecticut. Right. When there's pictures all over the place of people, you had, uh, what's her name, Fox, the, the, the actress, wearing 
a whaler shirt. Yeah, Megan Fox. Adam Sandler's wearing a yeah. whaler shirt. You know, come on. Yeah. You know, it, it just bothers me that, you know, nobody's come forward. You know, the government Malloy has said there was a couple groups interested in bringing the NHL back. Right. Yeah, but, again, he said interested. Nothing positive came forward from yeah. that. Yeah. Is it just, you know, uh, idle chatter? We don't know. Right. But, you know, come on. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was on social media yesterday or today that Batman's pushing Seattle. Yeah. You know, for the 2014-2015 season. Yeah, for well, the yeah for the 2014th time. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but you know? the problem is they have yeah. an arena. Yeah. And well, they they have a uh, the, they have a key arena. Right. But it's not really designed for hockey. Uh, they definitely would have to. They're kind of on our boat. We they would need a new arena. But the key arena would be just like the Civic Center. It could it act as a temporary home type. The of problem thing. is, yeah. someone is putting the bug in his ear. Yeah. And the problem is, is we're not putting the bug in his ear. No. No. The people of Connecticut have to, if, if you're serious about bringing the AHL back, yeah. whether it's in Hartford, whether it's in an, uh, a suburban area to build an arena, whatever it may be, you know, uh, Global's putting in, what, $32 million to, yeah. to, to have upgrades in the XL Center, yeah. a lot of it's heat, just, heating yeah, and air conditioning. Keep it, keep it running, yeah. But the problem is, are you, are you just plugging it into a money pit? Yeah. You know, uh, you know. The stopgap kind right. of. Right, uh, and, and you know. We need we need professional right. NHL hockey back here, and it's no disrespect to the AHL. It's a great brand of hockey. It's developmental hockey. Right. We don't know the players who are going to be here week to week. Right. You know our players. If it's an NHL club, we're going to have them for seasons. Mm -hmm. We're having them in the contract. It's a long-term commitment. I think it's time for the city and state to get on board and really push this. Right. Right. We'll have to see. Yeah, and it's it's interesting thing that you know the governor did say this. Uh, you know, when the groups there was maybe one or two groups. I can't remember how mm -hmm. many came to see him. There was only two, uh, from what I heard. Uh, right, right. So they, they they came to see him. They presented. You know, were, you know, probably very. It was very casual, I believe, in terms of you know uh, bringing a team, a hockey team, an NHL hockey team to Hartford. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, Malloy had said, and it was kind of a brush off. He goes, "This type of thing happens every year." Mm -hmm. Well, if it's happening every year, Governor. <laughs> If it's happening every year, <laughs> someone's coming to you and saying, I want to put a team here. It doesn't mean that – it probably means that there's something viable there and you should look into it maybe a little bit. Uh, it's are, not the same guy coming to you every right. year. And we know that you know, you know Larry Gottesdiener, back when he uh, operated the XL Center, mm -hmm. um, with Mayor Perez – yes, Mayor Perez got in trouble. <laughs> but Mayor Perez and Larry Gottesdiener went out to Minnesota, mm -hmm. took the trip mm – -hmm. Is it, was it all just window dressing? I don't think it was. No. I think there was something there yeah. that made them go out to Minnesota. Right. Why hasn't anyone else taken a ball and run with it? Right. I right. mean, no, you're not going to, uh, Governor Malloy is not going to put his platform uh, together no, stating that no. I'm going to run for governor yeah, and here's uh, because I'm bringing back the whalers and everyone's going to vote for him. That's not going to happen. But it would be a nice feather in his cap to say, I'm trying to make Hartford viable again sure. with, with a professional national right. exposure hockey club. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, th I can't stress that enough. We've, we've been a national, uh, the exposure for the gymnastics. Yeah. Uh, AG brought Absolutely. them in here. Yep. The Big East Championships. Yep. Except they've now been moved down to Bridgeport. Hello. Yeah. You know, now, you know, this is not good. You know, Mayor Segaro, of course, has supported and said he wants the Whalers back. Again, you know, saying things and doing things, two different things. Sure. You know, uh, the city's in a little turmoil anyways because of his, chief of his former chief of staff uh, getting in trouble. Right. But, um, you know, we have to do something that's positive mm -hmm. and, and, and to get business downtown. Yeah. I mean, instead yeah. of being a ghost town after 5 o'clock. Yeah, you could tell that, um, you know, the one thing I, I did when I went to go see the, um, the Hartford... Um, Bushnell Park Foundation, I think, put on yeah, a... The summer solstice. No, yeah, they put on a talk for Michael Freemuth, the CRPA. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, and he had said, uh, you know, he, he really kind of gets it. He said, the people that are in the sur suburbs that own houses, they're staying there. Mm -hmm. they, they're never going to move into the city and live in the city. They, they're Unless you there. make it. Well, no, he says, mm -hmm. bring in the young, bring in the... Really. The college crowds. So that's why they want to put a Yukon campus central. in that riverfront, right, and central yep. as well. And, and then once you do that... Then you start to have a good, you know, group of kids that are coming to see UConn basketball games, UConn hockey games. Then maybe you can make that push for the NHL. Well, so. I think down on Columbus Boulevard, right. aren't they? Or, no, I'm the sorry, um, the 
the broadcasting house where WFSB yes. used to be. Yeah. They, they're putting up, was it, 415-unit apartment building. Yes, they are. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I like the motion. You know, right. the Hartford Alliance, another great group. Right. Talk about business, great group to get involved in. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they tell you what's going on. Right. And I think... You know, Oz Grable does a great job uh, emceeing and being... Yeah. Uh, it was actually them who put the, the Michael Freemuth CRDA, okay. not, not the yep. Bushnell Park. <laughs> okay, but, yep. but, yeah. Well, the Bushnell Park Foundation also had the summer solstice. That's right. And those are a lot of great people because it's a nonprofit group right. that's going after rebuilding the arch yeah. and, and looking at Bushnell Park as, right. as, as a staple of Hartford. Sure. Not um, diehard hockey fans, but when we uh, when we did talk to them, mm -hmm. they were uh, excited about the fact that there were people that wanted to bring the NHL back because they're about the fact that it'll grow hockey. Uh, I mean, to grow Hartford to have sure. hockey. You're going to grow hockey. You're going to grow the arts. You're going to you know you've got several things. Uh, you start to put those together, and you and you've got a, yourself a, a pretty good city. And that's really what it comes down to. You know, um, when you look at you know, Jennifer Devella is the president of Bush Bushnell Park Foundation, and she's a great person to have uh, to have a conversation with. And it is about that. It's about not one entity. Uh, yeah, we push the NHL, of course, because it's a hockey program. But, you know, you spend an evening at the summer solstice and you're meeting lawyers. You're learning the business leaders. Mayor Segaro is there. Um, you know, these are the people who care about Harvard. These people live downtown, Bushnell right. Towers. They, they work in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they really, they, they, they couldn't stress it enough that the city does not close down at 5 o'clock. Right. You know, there is a nightlife. There yeah. are things to do. You have Hartford Stage. Right. You have the Bushnell. Right. Um, Jason Alexander's coming to the Bushnell. Oh. Um, you know, obviously, you know, he's nothing without the other ones as far as I'm concerned <laughs> uh, with Seinfeld. Yeah. But, you know, these are people, you know, Stephen King was just in Hartford. That's true. He um, was there in the same night. That I think Justin Bieber was there. Or yep. Yeah. Crazy oh, was, night. And, and yeah. the fireworks. And the fireworks. Yeah. So, oh, you know, Hartford night. was jamming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably no place to park, but right. still. You know, when you look at, you know, what we have to accomplish as, as people who like Hartford, uh, they want our money. They want us to attend hockey games uh, and, and events like the fireworks of Bushnell and, mm. and Hartford Stage. We all have to work together. Right. And, you know, we have to prove that Hartford's, like I said before, a major league city on many levels. That's right. Uh, you know, we have insurance companies and, and other uh, businesses down there that have to survive. Right. Uh, and shame on you if you're working downtown every single day and you just leave at five o'clock. There's other things to do. Mm. Uh, I worked downtown many years, yeah. and it was a great place. I drove limousines. Uh, I'll tell you I what, I've enjoyed it. I, yeah. I've stayed down. Oh, I started uh, to work downtown. So started to stay downtown mm -hmm. more, uh, just because the, the restaurants are really good. They are. Uh, and, but people don't know that, you know. No. It's, and, and a lot of them go under. Uh, yeah, you yeah. remember that we had a restaurant that was a Rio on Pratt Street. That oh, was great. That nice people. Nice family people. owned. Yeah, it was yeah. very and very, uh, you know, I mean, very authentic. But yep. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work. You know? yeah. Well, you know, this is a, a quick half hour tonight. Uh, I think we covered a lot from the hockey standpoint, yep. the, uh, the Hartford standpoint. Uh, so we're going to uh, have Ehor Selmak uh, on our show next time, talking about whalers apparel and, and memorabilia. Mm -hmm. So we'll catch you next time. One Nation Under Green. Have a great night.